Hi everyone, I'm Louise McCabe and I'm a painter and you may have seen some of my uh, paintings online. I was uh, scheduled to have a gallery show in Cannes this April, but it was cancelled because of the obvious. It was going to be at the English Set Theatre, uh, which shows musicals and uh, theatrical productions, but also has this really nice gallery attached. I'm disappointed not to have shown um, my work there, but hopefully that'll change in the coming year if anything ever gets back to normal. Meanwhile, I'm doing this online gallery show and seeing how that works out. So I think there's a certain kind of American who views France as the American dream. The American dream is to end up in France. Ever since Hemingway romanticized it in his books in the 1920s, there's been this American fantasy of coming to France, um, coming to Paris, uh, drinking wine and sitting around the cafes, seeing all the art in the museums, um, going to the south of France, seeing movie stars, uh, fashion. The fact is, every year Americans flock to France. I flock to France. Back in the 90s, my husband and I bought a place in the countryside. And five years ago, we moved here. And even though we don't live in Paris, we try to spend a lot of time there. I love it and paint it. And I am one of those romantic France lovers. In addition, in the past five years, we've traveled as much as we can. And the fact is, it's really easy. You just jump in the car and you drive off and there's all these beautiful little towns and beautiful views and countryside and mountains and lakes and, and seaside. And um, I paint what I can, where I can. And I feel like I'm living that American dream. This year I've been painting in oils. In the past chunk of time I've been doing watercolors, but now I'm branching into a different kind of medium. So my show will show some oils, but it'll also show some of the watercolors that didn't make it into last year's show. Talk to you in a second. This one is called Ian, and it's a picture, not an exact portrait, but a painting of a friend of ours who came to our summer party last summer, and he um, is looking quite stylish, and I like the flowers and the stones behind him, and it was a lovely occasion. This painting, whoops, the light's a bit weird. Um, this painting is a street in, Bar in Barcelona. And we had waited hours and hours to get tickets to go into the Gaudi Park. And this was in the surrounding neighborhood with that lovely disintegrating wall on the left and um, the flowers and the trees. Really nice combination, and it's called the, I think it's called the Cyclist, yes, because there's in fact a boy on a bicycle there. This one is, can you see that, the uh, park in Gengong. Um, it's a nearby town, and in the park near the town hall. Um, they have reproductions of famous statues and it was a glorious day and lots of beautiful plants. This painting is called the Samalo or maybe the Samalo Cafe because it's in a part of Paris where a lot of Bretons live and Samalo is the famous monastery on the north coast of Brittany. But we like staying here because it's near the station and it's a classy little neighborhood. And this is a classy little cafe. This is um, the ruined church in Botmel. Botmel is a town near where we live where in the 19th century, the ancient church burned down, but the ruins remain, and it's a lovely, peaceful spot. 
and it's a great place for picnics. This is a painting of St. George's Market in Belfast, where they sell olives. It's not an open air market, it's a covered market. There's um, lots of people selling food and um, touristy stuff and trinkets and jewelry and art. But these uh, olive guys look great. I love olives. Don't know about you. This painting is um, a street in the Marais in Paris. And it's early morning and this guy is either sneaking into the house or going out to work. I just love the way the shadows fall, the slice across that street. There's lots of beautiful streets in Paris and there's beautiful light everywhere you go, even in the rain. Somebody's interested in this painting. Um, it may not be up for sale for very long, but I haven't heard a confirmation yet. This is a painting that was done in Carantec which is a nice little town on the north coast of Brittany. And I spent the day craning my neck upwards so I could get the spire. It's simple, it's small, uh, but it's quite emblematic of uh, what Breton villages look like. This is another street in Barcelona. And this time it's one of the alleyways and they're so, long and spindly, they, they're very shadowy, really quite moody, but they protect you from the hot sunshine. So you can get around the city and stay cool when it gets really hot, which it does. But I just like the way that this shows, like, light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> this is another painting from our garden party. And Again, these two in the blue dress and the blue jumpsuit, they're um, the same family as Ian, and they're just incredibly stylish. Much cooler in the shadows that day. And this is another olive market. You can see a, a theme emerging here. I love olives, but I just love the markets. I'm going to be doing more of those. It's just such a nice way of going out and seeing people and getting food and seeing all these different cool things that people prepare. Lots of them in France, but also in different countries of Europe. This painting was from a lunch we went to at a restaurant called Lo, L apostrophe O, but Lo in French also means water. And this restaurant is on the water. And it was really kind of a nice lunch in a classy place. But the painting ended up being quite moody. And I just like the way the reflections fall across those tables. This is a painting of Welguat, which uh, is famous for its gigantic boulders left over from bygone ice ages. But there's also this really lovely lake. And the day was unexpectedly gorgeous with um, a ridiculous amount of gorgeous reflections going on. I keep saying gorgeous. It was a really nice day. <laughs> this painting also shows the kind of frames that I can offer. Um, if anyone's interested. When you walk down from the top of the hill of Montmartre in Paris, and you walk down these cobbled alleyways and you come to the Place Goudeau, which has a, a little ledge with a, a balustrade along it, with steps that lead down to this cafe right here. And it's always a very jolly scene in the summertime with everyone sitting outside. Sorry about the light. I'll do a separate story about this one afterwards. Um, almost everyone is on their phones, but it's a really nice scene. 
This is from the town of Morley nearby. Again, at a beautiful medieval center, but a 19th century viaduct that goes across the top of the town. It's gigantic, huge, sort of Egyptian giganticness going on. And it's made of these huge blocks of stone and it carries the railway. But in World War II, the Germans bombed it and tried to stop the trains going back and forth. And it didn't work because it was so strong. But it, it just is just a beautiful way of looking at the town with that viaduct. This is, I think it's Pont Neuf, a view from Pont Neuf, view from Pont Neuf in Paris, looking down into the little park and then to the bridges beyond and the tiny little people walking across the bridge. It's a really nice view. This is um, at the bottom of the hill of Pamplona in Spain. We went there last year and there's a little park and a river going by and this bridge going over the river and just this amazing reflection. This is um, from Tampere. Uh, There's a town about an hour's drive west from us. Again, a gorgeous <laughs> medieval center of town and a river that runs through the town. A lot of these towns are built on rivers, if you haven't noticed yet. And the um, beautiful reflections. This is the um, restaurant called Brasserie de la Plage in Lucky Rec on the north coast of, of Brittany. And we go there a lot, and definitely in the summer, and enjoy the oysters and seafood. Nice little place. And this, <laughs> once again, is a watercolor version of one of the Olive Market pictures. I don't know, I just get into doing those detailed olives. This is the town of Roscarf, again with the cobbled streets and the old stone houses, which I love. This is the jumping off place, the ferry port, for going from Northern Brittany to Ireland and England. And there's a lot of cool little restaurants here. And finally, this is a scene from our local pub, which is called Les Fous, which means the crazy people. They're really nice and they make their own beer. And sometimes they have musicians turn up and have a, a little play. All of these paintings are available on my website, louisamccabeart.com. Um, go take a poke around, see what you think. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. The light is not amazing in here, so I will be telling individual painting stories over the next couple of weeks um, with improved lighting focused on an individual painting at a time. Here's some things to keep in mind. The last time I walked by Notre Dame Cathedral, there was a big long line outside and I thought, I don't feel like waiting in line. I'll just go in next time I'm in town. Then of course the fire happened. This unbelievable building that has weathered wars and revolutions for more than 850 years is now teetering on the brink of just falling down, literally teetering. It was hor horrifying for me and for the French nation. It unfortunately underscores that your dream and your reality are always ephemeral. And that was before the virus. So now our entire world has shrunk. In the midst of this gigantic upheaval, I'm happy to to be painting pieces of life where dreams and reality collide. Art is where we interpret our world. We give ourselves the opportunity to feel. Emotional strength is how we will be ready for the inevitable changes that are coming. We can experience fear and joy. We can understand they are both ephemeral and we can keep on surviving. For me, my paintings are my expression of both fear and joy. And to paraphrase Sonny Hostin on The View, living life. For me, living life means the American dream of going to France, 
and painting, painting the beautiful and mysterious people and places. It's all the more poignant right now because me, along with everyone else in the world, is stuck at home. So right now I'm enjoying reliving my adventures through my paintings. See you next time.